All right. Good morning, everyone. Tommy, it might just be you. This is Shelly's Millions. This is the California EDD Unemployment Q&A live Sunday morning. Um, usually I set my questions, not in the chat, but, um, the ones that I do right at the beginning to channel members only, but I accidentally sent it out to everyone and the questions are really good. So I am going to read a couple of those. Um, so let me load up my community page. I hope everyone's having a good Sunday. I hope your unemployment claims are getting sorted out and give me just a second. I have had a crazy week. There's definitely videos that I want to be making and um, had some plumbing issues and some other things going on. So I haven't been able to do that. Hi, Sugar Sprinkles. Were you able to certify today and uh, have those payments already switched to paid? Hi, Manuel. You guys, I'm looking for, um, this is not the right section. I'm looking for the questions from my, well, just everybody on the channel, actually, since I sent it to everybody this week. <laughs> Okay, and somebody wanted to know what's going on with the AOC bill to extend unemployment. And, you know, there's just not much movement. There's not much support. I did hear that they're trying to stick elements of it into the stimulus package. But, you know, they negotiate these things back and forth. And it's just not looking like they want to do that. Uh, oh, Michael, please. It's too early for that. Uh, people still have questions about their unemployment benefits. Okay. Um, sincerely, Lulu uh, on from a community post says, I've been certifying for about eight weeks and I'm stuck in pending. Will it get paid? Um, and she's asking because those conditional payments, pay now programs, were supposed to, um, I already have to, sorry, I've got somebody spamming in the chat. Like, I hate this. I don't hate it, but... Um, Okay. Um, it was a bot, but I think my settings hit it anyway. Um, so the conditional payment pay now program was supposed to pay out by September 30th and it didn't. Um, I'm not sure if you guys saw Jenny Silver's video. She reached out to Daniela Urban from the center for, for workers rights. That was part of, you know, the group that made it so the EDD had to release those conditional payments. And Daniela Urban told Jenny that she wasn't able to comment on that, but that she would let Jenny know when there was a public statement ready. Now, there is going to be some things like where, let's say that it's just one or two pending payments. You, you did need to be pending for up to two weeks, right? And then the EDD would flag that you were pending and you needed to have had one successful payment from the EDD in order to get that released. So if you, and it might, even if you've been pending for two weeks, the EDD system might not have caught that it was pending for two weeks. So that could be part of it that the EDD hasn't realized that you were pending for two weeks. And then once they do, they'll release them. Uh, but I don't want to speculate too much on that. It, of course, it's the EDD, so it didn't quite go as planned. Uh, but yeah, lots of people did not have their pending payments released. And again, my advice on that, you can call and I have my claimer link in the description down below to say $5 if you want to call. But honestly, these days, I'm not even really recommending calling. I'm just going straight to emailing your assembly member because they seem to be able to fix that faster. Someone else emailed, they did ask EDD and they asked about their pending payments. And the EDD replied, your benefit year has ended and you need to reapply. So remember, some of, some people's benefit year could have been ending right when all the programs were expiring. If your benefit year ended and you haven't reapplied yet, you would need to reapply and see if you qualify for a new claim before they would release the payments for the extensions, I hope that made sense. So like, let's say that your benefit year ended um, August 30th. So you would have needed to file a new claim to get that last week paid because your benefit year ended before the extension programs ended. So if your benefit year ended right before all the programs expired, you would need to try and file a new claim. All right, let me take off my glasses. That's gonna help. I'll jump into your questions in just a second. Um, 
I think that's really it. The AOC bill, um, which isn't looking like there's much movement on for extending unemployment, the September 30th conditional payments, and the last payment certified. Oh, and yeah, so to the person who has eight pending payments, email your assembly member, see if they can release those pending payments. But yes, once the EDD determines that you're eligible for those payments, they still should release them to you. It's not like you're never going to get them just because the date of September 30th has come and gone. Um, whenever it is that they figure it out that you were eligible, they should get you paid on those. Okay. Um, also, backdating claims. If you're somebody who's waiting to find out if your backdating EDD unemployment claim is approved or not, it can take up to two months to get a response from them. But a lot of people are having good luck calling for that. Like a rep, a customer service rep is able to push those payments through. So that might be worth um, looking into. Okay. Mercedes, good morning, says, um, the place that you got hired for is taking forever on their background check. I mean, how long do those even take? I would call them back. Um, the place where I work does not do background checks. So um, if it seems like it's been a long time, just say, hey, just wanted to follow up. Have you received my background check yet? I'm hoping to find out when I'll be starting with you and see what they say. Um, don't be afraid to talk to your employers, guys. I, you be respectful. Um, you know, ask them when a good time is. You know, if you call, say, hey, is now a good time? I just have a quick question. And maybe, you know, maybe they'll say, oh, can you call us back in 20 minutes? Or, you know, if you're knocking on an office door, maybe it's not a good time. So maybe just check, make sure it's a good time. But don't be afraid to talk to your employers. Um, I can't speak for everybody, but I know like where I work, we want to keep our employees happy. You know, there's only so much we can do, right? Everybody wants more money. I can't always do that, especially right now. Um, but whatever else I can do to make the workplace a better place, I really do want to try and do that. But sometimes if you come knock on the door, it might not be a good time. So just find out if it's a good time. And then when it is a good time, let your employer know what you need. And you need to know when that background check is going to be completed so that you know for sure if you're starting there, if you still need to look for other work. Nancy says, I just got hired for a part-time job, but not getting enough hours, only work one day a week. Can I reapply for a claim? You can try. Look, here's the thing, right? Nothing ever stops you from seeing if you qualify for a new claim. If you don't qualify, they will let you know. So I'm not, you know, without knowing your weekly benefit amount and all of that, it would be really hard to say if you would qualify for a new claim. But apply for a new claim and see what they say. And if you do, then you'll get it. And if you don't, you won't. Um, it is getting to be the holiday season. So I hope that your job picks up. I hope that um, you find something that gives you the hours you need. One day a week is really little. Also, let your employer know that you want more hours. Let them know like if somebody else calls out sick that you would be happy to pick up the shift Something else, I can't speak for all employers, something else that we love. If you're bored at work, right? Like if, if your work is slow, maybe that's why they're only giving you one shift. Ask whoever your supervisor is, say, is there anything else that you've been meaning to get done that you haven't had help? I'd love to help you. Um, I'm not busy for the next 20 minutes. Is there a project you want me to work on? Like even if an employer doesn't, often they're not gonna have a project for you to work on, but the fact that you even asked, they're gonna love that. Okay. Um, oh, good sugar sprinkles. Michael. Oh, don't say dirty stuff. Okay. Um, trophy wife. Hello. Andrew, will I replace my phone soon? So Andrew's referring to the fact that I bought the new iPhone 13 Pro Max Gold. And uh, I unboxed it live and less than eight hours later it broke. And so I'm back to my iPhone 8 Plus. I don't know. I'm still mad but this phone only works on speakerphone. And like now something's happening. Like if I brush up against this, it's not working. There's like something, there's like some cracks. I do need a new phone, but I'm, I'm mad now. So I don't know. I, I was thinking about trying to get that done. Now all those phones are back ordered, but maybe I don't need that. I don't know. I'm still bitter about it. It sucks to buy a phone, a really expensive 
phone that should be a quality product and have it die eight hours later. I know, I know. Um, I'm very lucky to have that problem to begin with. Ah, Feroz, can I open a new claim for here in California? Again, okay, let's talk about the qualifications for a new unemployment claim in California. When you have a back-to-back -back claim, two consecutive claims. So Jenny Silver likes to focus on the earnings requirements, but rather than send you guys um, digging through your earnings requirements, the easier question I think to answer is, did you do any work? So I got furloughed March 15th, 2020. My benefit year ended uh, March 2021 of this year. You had to have done some work, right? Or even if you were kept on the extensions, you had to have done some work in order to qualify for a new claim. And for the earnings requirement, you need to have W-2 wages of at least $1,300 from when you opened your original claim. And one of the easiest ways that I like to explain this, I was like, well, how could you have earnings from a W-2 employer, right, and not done any work? And here's how. I got furloughed March 15th. Oh, <coughs> excuse me. I have to take a sip of coffee. <coughs> Excuse me. I got furloughed March 15th. Oh my God. I have, I can't speak. All right. Well, we're going to go anyway. I got furloughed March 15th. <clears throat> I'm going to say that a million times, apparently. And I got a, <clears throat> that's when I needed to file. Guys, I'm going to have to go get water, I think. What is going on? All right. I got a paycheck on March 20th, but I hadn't worked, right? I got furloughed on the 15th, but I received a paycheck on March 20th. That was from a W-2 employer. That was enough to meet the wage requirement, right? Became unemployed March 15th, got a check on March 20th. But if I haven't done any work for the W-2, or sorry, it, the work that you need to have done doesn't actually have to be from a W-2 employer, which makes it even more confusing. The earnings requirement does need to be from a W-2 employer, but the attachment to the workforce does not. That could actually be from some self-employment, um, which makes it even more confusing. But I think the main thing to look for is have you done any work since originally filing your unemployment claim? And if you haven't, you're not going to qualify. And then if you, if you don't have at least $1,300 in earnings from a W-2 employer, then you wouldn't qualify. But nothing stops you from filing and seeing if it gets approved. Okay, and my voice is back. That was really weird, guys. Uh, if you guys could take a minute and like the video, I would really appreciate it. Michael has a question. How long do you really have to wait when you apply for regular UI? Okay. So it is supposed to take 21 days to find out if you qualify for a new claim. And the one week waiting period is back into play. So it could take, it could take a month before you're seeing benefits. You should receive a letter after you apply, about 10 business days after you apply. So you should find out if you qualify in about 10 business days but between like the third party review for fraud and uh, you are going to need to verify your ID again. The EDD did clear that up. I was thinking that maybe if you already did it, you wouldn't have to, but it does look like you're going to need to verify your ID again. Um, so you'll need to do that. That that can be a little while and then the waiting week. So it could be a while before you get paid, but you should find out if you're approved for the new claim or not in about 10 business days. Okay, Goldilocks, what about the new claim that was deferred and you're certifying but still stuck in pending on a new claim when the old claim was awarded a conditional payment? Okay, so the old claim being awarded conditional payments is kind of, that's a totally separate thing. So on that, you should be good and you're just waiting for your phone determination interview. And if they never have your phone determination interview, that's supposed to mean that they determined that they no longer needed to talk to you about your eligibility issue.
for the, the deferred new claim payment, the DNCP program, what's going on there is apparently, since everything's computerized, I am hearing that some people received the deferred new claim payment letter. And, and some people are really confused about this. You would have needed that letter specifically. If you just got an award letter, that doesn't necessarily give you the whole picture. A lot of people got an award letter. But with that award letter, one of three things really should have happened. If your benefit amount didn't decrease by $25, you should have been already on that new claim. If it did decrease, your new weekly benefit amount decreased by more than $25, you should have received a notice. And it doesn't say, at the top, the notice doesn't say deferred new claim payment notice. What it says is, I'm gonna make sure I quote this right, so I'm gonna to go to my photos here, and I did save it under my favorites. So now I never know how to get to my favorites. It says, notice of eligibility to remain on pandemic emergency unemployment compensation. It's a long kind of letter. That's what it looks like. Um, you would have needed to get that letter to truly have a deferred new claim payment the, to be on the DNCP program. If you just got an award letter, um, the other piece of mail that you should have received if you didn't truly qualify for a new claim is the determination of invalid claim number 1277 letter. Okay. Um, so yeah, and if you're certifying on what should be the new claim and it's stuck on pending, you're either going to need to call or meet with your assembly member. But again, so the people, I am hearing that some people actually got the DNCP notice, but now the EDD realizes that there was no attachment to the workforce since filing the original claim, and they're saying that that letter was sent out in error. They have not officially said that. That's just what, you know, Jenny and myself are piecing together from what our, our users are telling us. Um, but email your assembly member, get them involved, and see if they can help with your payments. And guys, I'm at 11.04 in the comments, and thank you for joining me this Sunday morning. Rose says, I still have a balance on my claim, but I can't certify anymore. Why? So most of the programs totally ended. It doesn't matter if there was a claim balance remaining. So especially if you got the one week of Fed Ed, the EDD loaded the balance for the entire duration of the program. But the Fed Ed unemployment extension completely ends the week ending September 11th. So a lot of people got a really big claim balance increase on the week of September 11th, and now you just don't have access to it anymore. Um, uh oh, I lost my place already. Uh, so I'll take some comments. That means like that's a good time to like the video, and I will be scrolling back up. Yeah. So Lisa, we just did that question. What if I still have money in my account, like nine thousand dollars? Can I reapply? The claim balance and whether you can reapply are two totally different things. A lot of people, too, were just applying for their PUA unemployment claims, you know, maybe in late August, maybe that very first week of September, and then they were going to ask to get backdated. And the backdating could still happen, or the backdating might not be approved. And if it wasn't approved, those people would see the whole claim balance, but you since the program expired, the PUA program expired September 4th, you wouldn't have access to that balance anymore. So when you reapply or when you file a new unemployment claim, you would see a completely different claim balance. That would load up with a fresh balance of up to 26 weeks of benefits. And again, there's nothing to stop you from trying to file a new claim or reapplying for unemployment benefits but if you haven't had any attachment to the workforce, so if you haven't had a new job since you first filed for unemployment benefits, you're not going to qualify for a new claim. Okay. Goldilocks is on hold with the EDD right now for a tier two specialist. Uh, any, she's got some, she wants to know if anybody else has any questions. <laughs> there should be a couple more hours and you've already been on hold for two and a half hours. I hope they're able to work out your claim. I'm going to do Tommy Thompson's as I work my way back up. 
Um, Tommy Thompson says, can you get a repair estimate from a repair shop? What about, oh, I don't, I maybe got to read them in order. Uh, Tommy also says, my W-2 for July, August, and September 2020 was from the federal government. Does this exclude me from California EDD unemployment? So I think there are some different qualifications if you were a government employee, but Tommy, the don't, see, here's why I don't like focusing on the earnings requirements. When did you open your claim, your first claim, and have you done any work? either self-employment or W-2 work? Have you done work since filing that original claim? If not, if you haven't done any work since opening your original claim, it's not worth it digging back into like your base period, right? Because it's, it's not going to matter if you haven't done any work. Hi, Joseph. Um, yes, Michael, it's still too early. Okay. Tommy's saying that he had them contact Senator Pat Bates and now EDD is behaving. They also will be recovering the $300 monthly bonus, which they had not received. Uh, Tommy's helping um, his friend or neighbor, right, with uh, with their claim. Good morning, Debbie. Ooh. All right. Debbie's asking a question about my regular job and about movies. Okay. So here's some good news. This is the busiest we've been in a little while. Um. The new Soprano movie, the Soprano prequel, I can't say it's called The Many Saints of Newark. I can't say Newark, 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 Newark. I don't know. Uh, and I do the recording for my job. So that's embarrassing that I have trouble with that, right? But we all have shortcomings. Okay, so The Many Saints of Newark, the Sopranos sequel, is the number one movie at the theater this weekend, even though... Um, even though it's also on HBO Max. So that's pretty cool. By the way, if you have AT&T as a cell phone provider, you guys should be getting HBO Max for free. Uh, but I think the Sopranos prequel is, and I'll tell you guys, I will, because I work at the movie theater because I love the people that I work with, not necessarily because I'm a big movie buff. Um, but I think that's a movie that you should see on the big screen. The other movie this week that's doing really well is a movie called Titan. I probably didn't say that either. I think it's French Titan. I think it's like about a robot who's like made out of titanium kind of, I don't know. It's like futuristic. It looks really cool. You know, it's weird. Like there's this distributor and they're called neon. Neon seems to constantly put out good movies. The other one is a little distributor called a 24, like everything they put out. So they're like Sony or Paramount, but they're kind of smaller um, and little, like more indie, but they put out really good films. Um, so there's your, there's your weekend film update. Uh, do check out the mini saints of Newark and check out Titan. Titan. I don't know. It's French. I can't, I'm not good at saying it, but it looks really cool. And that one's also busy next week. We get the bond movie. Okay. I'm going to go back into your unemployment questions. Cause I know that's what you guys are here for though. I do want to change up my content. So I do want to start talking about other things. Um, I have a video coming out soon about resume building, uh, and I have a collaboration with somebody who's a landlord. All right. And I'm, you guys, would you like to see, have you guys seen this t-shirt? It says like RIP EDD and like, it has like the dates for PUA unemployment and it's kind of a, I don't know. I've always, anyway, people really liked that shirt and I'm, debating whether I should have the guy that made that shirt on the channel to talk about that. Okay. Um, okay. So I'm finding your comments. I'm figuring out where I got left, where I left off. Uh oh, okay. Goldilocks is saying, oh yeah, we did. That's where I left off. Okay. So Rose, <laughs> uh, nope, we did roses too. Rose is saying, so it's pretty much over, right? Yeah, it really is, unfortunately, um, which is why I want to transition my, my content. Oh, and then now we're at Debbie's question. And business is better. And next week we get the Bond movie and that should be good. And then, so we show a lot of independent films. And then, so the Wes Anderson movie, French Dispatch is the next one that'll do really well. So it is getting into the busier season for us. And I'm very thankful for that. 
Chris M. <laughs> is EDD getting extended with the boost? No, it's not. E that's something important to note, though, is that even if you qualify for a new unemployment claim, it's not going to come with the unemployment boost. It's just going to be whatever your base weekly benefit amount is. Uh, Faroge, would I still get extra weeks after I reapply if my benefit year ended? So if you file a new claim and you qualify for that new unemployment claim, it's up to 26 weeks of benefits. Not everyone who even qualifies for a new claim will get the full 26 weeks. Some people will only be awarded 13 weeks. Um, okay, Nora says, I got a new claim extension but went to try and certify and I can't certify at all. So there's no more extensions. A lot of people got the Fed Ed extension, and it was really confusing because it loaded up a, a whole bunch of new weeks. And after it loaded up those weeks and after people certified for the week ending September 11th, that's when the program ended. The FedEd extension ended then. But after that, they sent out the letter to people saying that they qualified for, I think it said up to 20 weeks, but notice the wording up two. And unfortunately, the program expired. So the last week to collect benefits on that FedEd extension was 9-11. And so even if you have a claim balance, you won't be able to access that anymore. But if you qualified, so really only if you qualified for the new claim, or if you truly, truly got the notice to remain on pandemic unemployment, emergency unemployment compensation, the DNCP letter. Those are the only two situations right now where someone would be able to certify and collect unemployment benefits. For the rest of it, it's all ended. Okay. Um, oh, okay. So for Roj, if you need to call for backdating, you don't call for backdating. You actually use ask EDD and you request backdating. But first, like I know that you had a claim. So backdating is really just for weeks when you really should have been getting unemployment benefits, but you weren't. So let's say that your old claim ended September 4th. And for whatever reason, you thought that you were going to still be on an extension or you thought you were approved for the DNCP claim or something like that. And so all from September 4th until now, you've just been sitting tight waiting for that new claim to kick in and the new claim hasn't kicked in. And for whatever reason, they tell you that you need to reapply and file a new unemployment claim now. So now it's October 3rd. So from September 4th to October 3rd, you would have had no payments. And once the EDD approved the new claim starting October 3rd, then you're missing that whole month. Then you would be able to log on to your UI online homepage, go to Ask EDD, and you would request backdating to, to September 5th because every, everybody should have been paid through September 4th. We certified for that week on September 5th. So if you're requesting backdating on the new claim and you didn't get the week of Fed Ed, you would want to put um, request backdating to 9 5. And if you did get that one week of Fed Ed, then you would want to request backdating to the week of sept uh, September 12th. Okay, so it's not a whole lot of weeks, but but don't call customer service for backdating. It's it's a thing in the drop down menu from Ask EDD. Okay, uh, but if you do need the number to the EDD, it's uh. It's been a while since I've said the number. I almost forgot it. It's 833-978-2511. Of course, Claimer is one of the best ways to get through to the EDD. If you do have pending payments, if you do need to call them. Um, and then our assembly members have been great help getting claims paid and helping with questions. And you don't have to sit through the phone and it's completely free. So the assembly members have just been really saints and superheroes through all this. And I just like huge respect and thanks from me to all of them for helping with our claims. Guys, if you could take a minute and like the video, I would really appreciate it. Okay. 
Ray J says, I was able to certify, but it only paid for the past two weeks. Okay. And I think I maybe, oh, I skipped one from Michael also. So this is kind of the same. So you do normally only certify for two weeks at a time. So Ray J, you might be one of the people that needs to actually request backdating for any weeks between, depending on whether you got fed at or not, either request backdating to nine five or request backdating to nine. 12, um, depending on if you got that week of fed ed or not, because normally you do only, uh, certify for two weeks at a time. Also, Ooh, there is the one week waiting period. So let me look at that. So the one week waiting period, I don't know. I don't know the logic behind that, but for new unemployment claims, they are making people serve the one week waiting period. So that actually might be your situation. So, Let's say, Ray J, that you got Fed Ed. I don't know if you did, but let's say that you got Fed Ed. Um, so then your one week waiting period that you would serve before you could collect benefits would be the week of September 12th through September 18th. So then today you would have certified for the week ending September 25th and the week ending October 2nd. So if you just now filed a new claim, that might be all you're eligible for, but you can certainly use the Ask EDD feature and see if they will uh, backdate it and if you qualify for any backdating. And then Michael had asked, do I know if when you get regular unemployment, do you get a large lump sum first? No, you're always going to be, well, it depends, right? So you're always just certifying for two weeks at a time. But sometimes they let you certify before your claim has completely been validated, right? Before it's gone to that third party for review, before you've done ID.me, um, your identity verification. So if you see pending, pending, if it's letting you certify, but it hasn't switched to paid, um, basically once all of those processes are, are complete, you could potentially get all of the pending weeks on the new claim paid at once, but generally it's just two weeks at a time. I hope that made sense. Okay. Yeah. So Faroj, like it's really, it's really hard to get through to the EDD. And I know that people a lot, not you guys, cause I feel like most of you guys that are in here are my regulars. And so you understand that claimer was needed and we're happy to kind of pay the $14.99 to use them and get through for a lot of people. It was worth it. But the ED, but really, and people are like, Claimer's greedy and Shelly and Jenny are greedy because they get bonuses for giving people their referral link, which is true. But really, the person to be mad at, in my opinion, don't be mad at me, be mad at the EDD for not being able to answer their phones. But the number that I call is still 833 978 two, five, one, one. Maybe I should clog up the phone lines and like do a, do a call and see if it's still like really hard to get through. And if it's really, um, still crazy long waits. So Salim, there is not any unemployment extension, unfortunately, unless you qualify for a whole new claim. Um, then, then unemployment benefits are over. Guys, I haven't had coffee. It was really hard for me to wake up this morning. Um, the days at work. So I haven't made a video this week because I had plumbing problems. Uh, those are fixed now. I also got to do something really fun. Um, and I should have been editing a video, but I chose the fun thing, which was also YouTube related though. I want to get better at editing my videos. We all have things we can work on. Um, I want to start shooting in other places besides just the blue room on the couch and being talking head videos. So I'm going to be trying some new things out, but it might take me longer to get my videos. But I also worked two 10 hour shifts this week. And then yesterday before work, I talked to my boss for an hour and all my day off, I talked to both like my immediate boss and my boss's boss, both of them for almost an hour. So it's not left me with a lot of free time. Um, okay. Anyway, enough about that. Uh, da, 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 da. Ace and Ants says how to get back date. So you're going to go, you're going to log on to your EDD um, UI online homepage and you're going to request backdating. One thing I do want to remind every everyone about backdating and you guys are not going to like this, but I don't want you guys to get yourself in hot water. I don't want you guys to accidentally commit 
fraud, right? When you request backdating at some point, especially if it's on your PUA claim, right? Which PUA unemployment benefits have ended, but you request backdating if for some reason you didn't know that you were eligible for PUA when you first became unemployed. But keep in mind, and we haven't seen this requirement yet. Sorry, I don't know if you guys can hear that. I was cracking my knuckles, bad habit. Um, at some point, the EDD is going to be asking everybody for proof of employment. So they're going to be asking to see an offer letter. If you hadn't started work, they're going to be asking for proof that you had an offer to begin work. They're going to be asking to see um, documents of your self-employment, and they have not yet let us know which documents are going to be acceptable yet. And that can come even if you back to work for months. The EDD has not said when they're going to send out those instructions. But basically, if the date of your offer letter doesn't match up to the date you're requesting backdating for, if the if if you're requesting backdating and you were like an Uber driver, but on your Uber driving records, it shows that you were still driving into April, May, June of 2020 or February 20, whenever you're requesting the backdating to, um, then you're not going to be eligible. So just make sure that when you're requesting backdating that when the EDD eventually gets around to asking for that proof of employment, that those dates match up as closely as possible, right? Um, but yeah, you're going to do that through the Ask EDD feature on your UI Online homepage. Okay. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, so Goldilocks is explaining more about what's going on with their claim and saying um, you're still waiting from the phone interview from the old claim and you're granted the conditional payments. You're now on the new claim that was deferred and you're still stuck in pending after certifying. Yeah, and I, you know, it's so hard to know in that situation exactly why, but yeah, you're calling. So that would be my advice. And if you don't get through or they don't have a good answer for you, definitely reach out to your assembly member. Levi, your EDD is pending. What should, what should I do? So yeah, your options are to either to call the EDD or to email your assembly member. And guys, emailing your assembly member is so easy. A lot of people are like, well, how long does it take after I contact my assembly member? Oftentimes they're going to get back to you in two days, 48 hours. And if it's something that they can fix, oftentimes your payments are released in, an, in four days after that. So in less than a week, no phone calls to the EDD required, your assembly member can often get it cleared up from you. So Goldilocks, I'm not sure if you would get the conditional payments on the new claim. Um, that's a little bit of a gray area because, so keep in mind, and, and here's what I'm thinking, right? For the conditional payments, you needed to have received at least one successful payment from the EDD on your claim. Now on your old claim, you were getting payments successfully, but I'm not sure since it's a new claim and that would be different if you haven't gotten any payments from the new claim yet, if they would count that as, as being part of the conditional payment pay now program, because on the new claim, you haven't yet got one payment. Does that make sense? So it's possible that the new claim is not covered in the conditional payment pay now program. But that was a really good question. I hope that made sense. And I'm not sure, right? So I hope I explained that correctly, but I'm thinking that that might not be covered because you, on the new claim, you have not yet had one successful payment. On the old claim you did, and that's why they were able to release those. Okay, so let me know if that sounds logical to you guys. All right. Michael, you're terrible. <laughs> okay. Um, people aren't even getting a dial tone with the other number. All right. We're going to call the EDD real quick to see if, like, you're not getting a dial tone. Um, let's see what happens here. So one eight three three nine seven eight two five one one, and I'm going to hit call. And then I'm going to hit speaker because that's the only way my phone works anyway. Thank you for calling the Employment Development Department. It went through. Unemployment Insurance Customer Service Center. It's been a long time since I've heard that. I didn't miss it. Uh, but I got right through on the 833-978-2511 number. 
Okay. Uh oh. Michael, please behave. <laughs> um, I think Michael just wants to be told to behave. Okay, Jen says, we're thankful. Oh, thank you, thank you. You're welcome, Jen. Okay, and oh, what in the world? You guys, I gotta change it from top chat to all chat. That keeps happening and then I get, then I miss questions. So I'm changing my settings on the chat so I can see everybody's comments and I'm sorry about that. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and work my way up. I am going to try and keep this at an hour today because people that are watching it after the fact are saying, Shelly, you've been going way too long. Well, maybe like an hour and 15 minutes. Okay. Smoochies. That's a cute name. I got through two, but in the end, it just says to call back. We're busy. Yeah. And that's why people do like Claimer because Claimer at least guarantees that you will be able to hold with the EDD, right? And most of us, though, we're so over calling the EDD that that's why I'm just kind of, you know, if you do want to use Claimer, great. It does get you through to hold. That's still going to be the easiest way if you want to call about your pending payments or call about your unemployment claim. But if you just are over calling, and I, I at this point, I think most of us are over calling, just email your assembly member. One email, one, one and done. <laughs> and it's free. Okay. So Brett says, I think I understand now. I got the award letter, $90 less than the original claim amount, then got a 1277 letter, and I haven't worked since April, so I don't qualify for the DNCP, right? Yes. So if you got the 1277 determination of invalid claim letter, that's saying that, hey, even though you got this award letter, you don't qualify for a new claim. So everybody got an award letter, right? Myself included. Uh, some some people's award letters said zero. That for sure means you don't qualify for a new claim. Uh, but even if you got an award letter with, if your award letter was not $25 less, then you should have been moved on to the new claim. If it was more than $25 less, but you didn't get the, the DNCP notice, the no, which actually says notice of eligibility to remain on pandemic, emergency unemployment compensation. If you didn't get that letter, you should have got the determination of invalid claim letter. Um, and you could also get the determination of invalid claim letter 1277, even if your benefit amount was exactly the same as it was before. So, but but the, the gist of this is that if you haven't had any attachment to the workforce, if you haven't gone back to work, since filing your original claim, then they really should have sent you the, the 1277 letter determination of invalid claim. But yes, Brett, you got your facts right. And unfortunately, you don't qualify for the new claim. Okay, Trader Girl, when will we hear an AOC update on the new bill? So yeah, that's kind of what's happening is what they said would happen, which is that there's just no traction, that there's not really a desire from there's a few politicians that do see the need for it, but there's not enough support to really pursue that. And what they're really focused on right now is that $3.5 uh, trillion infrastructure bill, right? Which they're calling the new stimulus bill. But it's not really stimulus in forms of like more money for us and expanded unemployment benefits. They are looking to try and maybe reform unemployment benefits, but not a true unemployment extension. And in reform, what they mean is like, give our unemployment offices like the EDD more money so that if something were like this were to ever happen again, there wouldn't be all the computer programming delays and things would be more efficient. So we wouldn't need to call the EDD as much. Um, they are looking at potentially some money in the infrastructure package to improve the process of unemployment, but not really getting any more money in our hands. The same is true for stimulus checks. There's not really a new going to be a new stimulus check. So how they're stimulating the economy in the new infrastructure package, which hasn't passed yet, um, is it supposed to create more jobs, more jobs in infrastructure, more jobs that require like less college education, which should help improve things for, for everyone is kind of the theory behind it. 
Um, but yeah, it's not looking like that's going to pass. Okay. Um, Smoochie said, can I ask, can they ask if you've been jabbed before offering the job? It's my understanding that they can. And actually in California, um, they pretty soon, a lot of industries with over a hundred employees, actually, I think Biden said that that's nationwide employers with more than a hundred employees are going to have to require that their employees have received the vaccine. Um, Marcia says I get paid $77 and $69. What does that mean? So it might mean that did you have one week where you had taxes withheld and one week where you didn't? Let me see what the taxes on $77 is. Wouldn't that be $7.7? Hold on. 77 times 10, but they round up. So yeah, that would be $8.77. 77, you had taxes withheld. It looks like maybe you had taxes withheld for one week and not the other because 77 minus eight, they would round up would be $69. So it sounds like your weekly benefit amount is $77, but you withheld the taxes. And so they paid you $69. Tommy Thompson's e uh, assembly person got EDD approval within 24 hours of receiving the email on the phone call. Call before you email so they look for your request. That's a good idea. So Tommy, I just want to go over why I recommend people to email. And a call and an email, I, I support that. But here's why, like, let's, let's say that they, that your assembly member pretends was as bad as the EDD. They haven't been, but like why I like email for your assembly member is then you have a written trail, right? It can't just be like you called and they told you, oh yeah, we'll fix your claim. And then a month goes by and you call back your assembly member and you're like, hey, you said you'd fix my claim. What happened? And they're like, we don't have any record of that. And then you don't have any proof. You might have, you might be able to show in your cell phone that you called them, but there's no trail really of what was said on that call. When you email them, there's going to be a written trail of, of the date you sent the email, what you said and what their response was. It's always better to have it in writing, but I do like following up with a call or calling first and, and, and then emailing that way. Uh, yeah. To have them be on the lookout. That seems like good advice, but overall I like emailing so that you have a written trail of who said what, when, in case you ever need that. Don't delete those emails, guys. Keep those in case the EDD pulls some funny stuff somewhere down <laughs> in the future. All right. The rookie chef says what's going on with that Senator who introduced the bill to extend pandemic unemployment benefits. Are they still looking at that or did they throw it out? They didn't throw it out, right? So first is a process called introducing it. She introduced it, but it would need to be brought to the House floor by Nancy Pelosi so that they could vote on it. And they haven't done that. And I really think that, that happens with a lot of bills. They get introduced, but then they don't actually get brought to the floor. I mean, it's not just like, oh, Nancy Pelosi's evil. Like everyone, I mean, it could be. But um, what happens a lot is these bills get introduced, but their focus isn't there right now, right? Their focus is on getting that infrastructure package done. And then, you know, possibly they'd be talking about other things, but they're not doing that. Um, you guys, should I, should I mute Michael for a minute? Is he being too bad? I never know when people get out of line, um, unless they're just flat out spamming, which please don't flat out spam. Um, but yeah, they're not really looking at it. Certainly not right now. Oh, am I caught up? Oh, okay. So Taizis says, I'm waiting for them to switch my remaining balance to another extension. So there are no more extensions. And so if you had a remaining balance, that essentially just disappears and goes back to the federal government in most cases. Um, it's been processing sep since September 5th. So there's no more extensions. So it would only be if you qualified for a new claim and then a new claim wouldn't have anything to do with the claim balance that you see on your claim. So it sounds like that that money has now been returned to the federal government and, and that's, that's the end. There's no more extensions. Sarah says, 
what do I think about PUA 300? If they pass the new package, will they pay retroactive? In AOC's bill, right, which they're not really looking at, they do, um, it would be retroactive if that passed. But again, nobody's focused on that right now. Okay, and somebody needs the EDD number again. Um, so I'll try and say it slower and I'm going to say it twice. So if you need the number to call the EDD, it's 833-978-2511. Again, that number is 833-978-2511. So um, you can try that if you have a pending EDD claim. I also have my claim or referral link in the description down below. If you click that link, it saves you $5. And that does at least guarantee that you would get to hold to speak to a rep, but hold times can still be really long and it doesn't guarantee that you'll get a rep that can fix your claim. Um, Debbie's saying Panera is hiring $15 an hour plus a signing bonus and tips. That's not bad money. And a lot of these companies will also have you up for a raise within your first 90 days. Well, after 90 days. Okay, Jose says, you guys, I'm so sorry. I missed a lot of comments because I had my settings not quite right. Uh, but I am going to scroll down. Okay, and the assembly member number, so I just gave the number to the EDD. The assembly member, it's like find your rep. Hold on, I'll link it. I should, I, sometimes, because I slept in this morning. Um, I will link it in the chat. I'm not good at like typing and speaking. Okay. And then I need an assistant to do this. And then one second. Uh, how are you guys doing with rental assistance? Nobody's asked me about that in, in this chat. Are you, did you guys reach out for rental assistance? Have you heard back? Are you worried about your bills? Let me know. Do you guys still need more information on that? I'm going to also put my claim or referral in there in case anybody wants to use that to call the EDD. And the EDD is open today, right? But you guys that have been watching for a long time, you guys know that I don't normally recommend calling on a Sunday because hold times are pretty long since it's certification day. And um, same with Monday. I recommend calling Tuesday through Saturday if possible. Okay. I just dropped the link to contact your assembly member. Uh, first you have to find your assembly member. So you're going to need to type in your zip code. I also dropped my claimer link in case you want to call them. And I've now pinned that as a top comment. Okay. Yeah. A24, they put out really good stuff. Uh, it's a movie distributor for those of you guys who weren't in here and neon N E O N. I don't know if I enunciated that well enough. Also puts out some really interesting things. So Sarah wants to know what is the difference between Fed EDD, but Fed Ed and extension. It's just a type of extension. So um, Fed Ed extension did last one week longer than the other extensions. So most of the extensions, which is really just, they were all PEUC extensions but people called it PEUC, extension tier two, extension tier two augmentation. Sometimes the second two were referred to as PEUX and the third one was PEUY. Only the customer service reps seemed to call them that. It wasn't anything ever like official in writing, uh, but the reps did seem to commonly call them that. Those extensions expired September 4th. Um, and the Fed Ed extension expired September 11th. So that's really the only difference. Okay. Um, Trader Girl, I filed an appeal due to the 1277 invalid claim. I appealed because they shut down California during the pandemic. And I feel EDD needs to consider that many people could not find a job in the last year. It doesn't hurt to try and file the appeal, but it's, it's unfortunately that's the way the laws work were written in it. And unfortunately, if you haven't had attachment to the workforce, I don't think you're going to win the appeal, but it, it doesn't hurt to try. 
Erica says, I applied for a new claim almost three weeks ago and I haven't heard a word from them. So again, so they should have sent you something letting you know if you qualify or not by now. That process really should only take 10 business days. But when determining, well, yeah, then they have to send it to a third party for a review. And then there is a one week waiting period. Um, but at this point in time, if it's been three weeks, either call them to find out what the holdup is or email your assembly member and have them ask what the holdup is. Robin says, what happens if you did not report about 2,500 while receiving PUA? Can you still file a new claim? So for PUA, you guys can always try and file a new claim, right? But if you are on PUA, there are two requirements for back-to-back -back claims. If you have one claim and then you need another one right away, you would need to have had some attachment to the workforce, right? Um, you would need to have done some work since originally filing your claim. You would also need to have had at least $1,300 since filing your original claim um, from a W-2 employer. So you would need some W-2 wages to qualify for that new claim. And that would need to be since you originally applied for benefits. Again, you could, no one's talking about extending the unemployment benefits, unfortunately. It's really sad. Okay, so Dirty Beard says my claim balance was 2,500. Am I effed? Possibly unless you qualify for a new claim. Those claim balances just pretty much go right back to the federal government um, because most of the extensions ended. Tommy Thompson. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you love me like little chocolate donuts. Well, thank you. Thank you for the donation. You guys certainly understand that benefits are ending. I never expect donations, but they are appreciated. Okay. But hang on to your money. Um, if you guys really want to do me a favor, if you really want to make me happy and do something good for yourself, you guys know what I'm probably going to say. It's either use my Weeble stock referral link, get two free stocks and see maybe if you can get Maybe one of them will be worth money. If you cash them out right away, there could be tax Im implications. This so would be mindful of that. Um, but also Yada Savings Bank. If you guys were able to save money and them, I do get like a extra raffle tickets or whatever. But the reason why I recommend them is because like if you're saving your money anyway, they pretty much have like the highest interest rate of any bank around. Most banks will give you like a penny a month for saving your money with them. And Yada's not like, it's not earth shattering money, right? Although there's the opportunity for earth shattering money, but like maybe you're going to get 10 bucks a month, maybe five bucks a month. Maybe it'll only be three bucks a month. Whatever amount you get from Yada though, it's definitely going to be more than you get from a regular savings account. So that's why I like them. And they're always linked in the description down below. So take your money, put it in a good savings account that gives you good like return on your savings. So Yada Bank, that's what you can do instead of donating money is save your money. Okay. Um, ba, 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 ba. I'm scrolling back. Uh, did I get most of the questions? Uh-oh. Proben Gandalf, could I maybe say hi to Dennis for you? Yes. Hi, Dennis. Okay. Uh-oh. All right. I'm going to scroll down. Am I pretty much caught up? Yes, Michael, still too early. Okay, Sarah says, how long will we wait for the new package to be announced? So right now, really, in the stimulus package, it's not going to include a stimulus check, and it's not talking about an unemployment extension. The new stimulus package is really the infrastructure bill. And so when they really refer to stimulus package, they're saying it's going to stimulate the economy by creating all these new jobs. But in terms of actual money, cash back to, to you and me, there's not any talk of that that I'm aware of. There are, you know, certain politicians, there's certain petitions that say, hey, like we need universal basic income. We should be sending out checks to two th of $2,000 to everybody every month. That, that has some steam that has some public support that doesn't seem to really have the support of our politicians. You know, AOC is, she did introduce the bill to try and get an unemployment extension. It would be retroactive if it passes, 
but everybody's so focused on that infrastructure bill that no one's really, and she knew that when she introduced it, she said, you know, I don't know what the support's going to be on it, but I still, you know, I want to fight for the American people. And some people were like, that was totally pointless. She knew it wasn't going to, to go anywhere. She just did that to make herself look good. Um, and I don't, you know, I don't know her reason behind it. It does definitely make it look like she's fighting for us to get a, an unemployment extension. But even all the news articles are saying in terms of a fourth stimulus check, it's up to your state to, to supply that. And California has in terms of the Golden State stimulus. And they're not talking about any other stimulus checks outside of the Golden State stimulus. I guess now it's, it would be the Golden State stimulus two checks that are going out, the $600 checks. And by the way, guys, if you haven't got those, the next batch was supposed to go out September or uh, October 5th. So that would be Tuesday. But now I'm hearing that there's delays, but they're supposed to be sending those out about every two weeks. So if you didn't get that already, they should be taking care of that soon. Tommy help people get PUA money to make mortgage and save their home equity. Following, um, my example is a sincere form of flattery, but does Michael, does Michael have the loss for me? I don't know. Um, ba, 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 ba. All right. Let's see here. Um, so Sharon saying, have I heard of PEUY? Yes. So I was actually just, just talking about that. So that is what some of the customer service reps called the third PEUC extension. I don't know if it was for abbreviation or, or what, but so really PEUC got extended three times and it was listed differently on our unemployment claims under our program type. How that program was listed is the first one was listed as PEUC. The second was listed as extension tier two. The third one was listed. Why can't I move my fingers? The third one was listed as PEU. Sorry. The third one was listed as extension tier two augmentation. However, if you called in and spoke with the customer service reps, sometimes they would refer to the second one as PEUX, and sometimes they would refer to the third one as PEUY. But those were never like official terms that were in writing. Oh, dear. Um, all right. Let me, Michael, you're naughty, so you're going in timeout. All right. I put him in timeout. Um, let's see here. You, oh, are there, oh, hi, Thalo. Um, you, uh, let's talk about that. Let's, you know, you guys are going to get like a little bit of like just raw, like information for me. Some like, some what I, what I really think about this, right? Thalo, you're right. Some people do need to stop saying, go get a job. Like it's easy. There's so much competition on getting jobs. So you're absolutely right. It is really hard to get a job right now, which is why I'm going to be making that video on uh, improving your resume. You guys, I can't, I, I had to collaborate with somebody because I had, well, actually I did write a resume and after speaking with her and after just kind of like researching, I realized I made a ton of mistakes on mine. So, but I've been with the same employer for 25 years. I've had some side hustles. Um, I drove for Uber back in 2014. I used to volunteer at my yoga studio to get like free yoga in exchange. It's called work for trade. And I've worked for a Halloween store because it's just fun. That's my favorite holiday. Um, a lot of businesses have actually reduced the total number of employees. A lot of businesses are not back at their full operating hours yet. Right. So that means it is going to be hard to get a job there. Not to mention, if you're if you have a child, if you're a single parent, right, and you've just sent your kid back to school, and so you get a job and you're ready to work and everything's going great, and then your child's asked to be sent home to quarantine, your employer would not be allowed to terminate you. But it is, it's tricky, right? Like if you're at work one day and then the next day you need to spend 10 days at home quarantine with your child, right? It's it's tricky to commit to a job. Then the second scenario is, and thankfully my mom is okay, but like 
what if my mom was immunocompromised, right? What if she were undergoing like cancer treatment or something like that? Um, my boss, my boss is calling me on my day off, guys. I don't know if you saw this the other day about how I keep getting called on my days off. And then that's why I'm a little, I haven't been able to make videos. I'll probably be on the phone with her an hour after this on my day off when I should be making videos. Okay. It's okay. I love my job. I'm happy to talk to my boss. Um, I'm glad that I have the type of boss that I can talk to. All right. Anyway. Um, <laughs> So then there's that element of work where you're, where you're doing a lot more. Anyway, let's, let me go back to that train of thought and then I'll take a couple more questions and then I'll head out for the day. What if your parent is immunocompromised, right? And they literally can't take the vaccine, even if they wanted to. Now I'm vaccinated. My mom actually is now as well, but if they couldn't take the vaccine, if you're, I had a friend that during the pandemic, her child was fighting cancer, a teenage child. Um, she beat cancer, which is great, but she wouldn't have been able to take the vaccine while she was getting the treatment, right? So let's say her mom got the vaccine. I think her mom did get the vaccine, but if the mom would have had to go back to work with the public, right, which is what a lot of us are doing. I work with the public. I'm touching money. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm picking up trash. I wear gloves, but, um, and guys, I'm not too good to say that I pick up trash. Don't be embarrassed by that. I'm a manager. I don't, I don't care. I've had to clean some bathrooms, some icky ones, <laughs> you know, it is what it is, but you know, I'm exposed probably, probably more than an office job, right? If I were to bring something like that home to my family, I would feel so bad. I would feel so, so bad. What's a fake number. You guys keep saying that something's a fake number. I don't know what that is. Guys, if you need to call the EDD, it's 833-978-2511. Okay. So in terms of what I think is going on where they're saying it's the great resignation and um, people aren't wanting to work. This is what I really think happened, right? I, th I think what happened is for the first time in a long time, I think a lot of people really did receive more money from unemployment than they did from work. Okay. And I think that that sucks. I think that that sucks that our jobs didn't pay us as much. No, she's not calling me to work. That would be a different boss that was calling me. Um, she's like my, my district manager. She's not, uh, she's calling to talk about work, but she's not going to be calling me into work. I won't have to do a whole shift, but I'll be working for like an hour. Here's the other thing, right? People are overworked. We're doing like a lot of us that did get called back hundred percent. I'm doing, um, I'm probably doing the job of three people, which probably means I wasn't working hard enough prior to the pandemic, but like, it's a lot. It's a lot. Like we lost our HR person. So I'm kind of doing that at my location. I'm training somebody else to do my job. So that frees me up to do more H HR. Um, my, my immediate boss He's only back three days a week because he's got some other stuff going on. Like I, th that's totally understandable. And like, I've known my boss for 22 years or something like that. And I would consider him a friend as well. So I, I get it, but like, we're working harder to go back. Right. And we're feeling undervalued. We're feeling overworked and undervalued. And for the first time in probably a lot of our lives, we were actually able to cover our bills from the unemployment benefits. We were able to have a little bit of breathing room and to get ahead. And now for the most part, we should be able to have that in life, right? We should be able to have breathing room. We should be able to be able to pay our bills and have just a tiny bit left over. And unemployment benefits may have given us a taste of that. I do think that that's possible. I think that's why people aren't wanting to go back to low wage jobs. There are absolutely a lot of Starbucks jobs and there's nothing wrong with working at Starbucks or, or anywhere like that. And you can work your way up, but I understand why people don't want to be working to the bone and not, and, and be eating top ramen. Right. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. And I, I still believe that you can do that and claw your way to home ownership and 
have investments and have savings. But I think a lot of people are like, what was I doing with my life? You know, that's kind of what I think is going on. Now, in terms of unemployment benefits, paying more than your job, I was a salaried manager and I was bringing home more on unemployment benefits than I was from work. Now, there were a lot of things going on there, right? I wasn't having health insurance payments come out of my unemployment checks. That's not, that wasn't an option. I contribute as much as I can to my 401k. That wasn't an option from unemployment. Um, I also had a 401k loan that I took out to buy the house and I wasn't able to pay back that loan, you know, an, as an automatic payment from my unemployment check. But what my take home was from my job versus what my take home was from unemployment, I was physically getting more money from unemployment as a salaried manager in California. So I don't, I wasn't making like great money. I was not making six figures. I'm not making six figures even now, but what I was physically taking home was more than on unemployment was more than I was physically taking home from my job. And, and it, you know, I get it. I get why people are hesitant to take low wage jobs. Now, if you can't pay your bills, you should absolutely take one of those. And I 100% believe in working your way up. But I also believe in trying to get our resumes as good as we can, trying to really find a company that values you and your time. <laughs> I love my job, right? I, I love it. I do. Um, this week, it's been a little stressful. But yeah, Follow is saying that he worked 40 to 64 hours a week. That's probably about what my work week is. Um, and it's, it's, that's a lot, right? And so now we're, now we're striving for something better, but I also believe, especially like, like companies like mine, we're so thankful, right? Our, our, our staff make less than I do. Um, we're so thankful to those of them that have come back that are willing to work and all of that. Um, but I think that's what's going on. I, you know, and do value yourself and value your time unless you really, really love your job and you're really dedicated to your company. And even then maybe always kind of have one eye open for something better anyway. So yes, I don't think people should be saying, yes, there are lots of jobs available. Some of them are entry-level jobs and there's nothing wrong with that. You can work your way up at an entry-level job, but make sure that that entry-level job is also valuing you and your time and your long-term goals. You know what I mean? I hope that makes sense. Um, and then let's see, Lacey says, I currently work for Starbucks and I can help with the hiring process. Reach out. Uh, be careful, guys. I don't, I don't know about this with Lacey, please. Lacey, I'm going to go ahead and hide your comment. Um, I don't normally um, approve like email addresses because it's it's so hard these days to, to sort out scammers versus people that are really genuinely wanting to help. So I'm so, so sorry. I'm going to go ahead and hide that. Um, Follow has tried to apply, got beat by others, even FedEx, Amazon, GameStop, and Best Buy. Just, you know what? Eventually you're going to find it. I'm going to be putting out a, a video soon about updating your resume and we need to do that. But yeah, not everyone can just get a job, even if they are totally able and wanting just an entry level job. So yeah, um, I already follow. I'm so sorry. I blocked the kitten email because I can't tell. And I, my first instinct is to um, help you guys. You applied to get an engineer, but you got beat by others. Just keep applying and eventually the right job with the right fit will come up. Thank you, Aaron. Um, Tommy says hospitals will be laying off experienced nurses due, due to the vaccine mandate and replacing them with rookie nurses that get paid much less. The laid off nurses will lose benefits. Yeah. And that's, that's such a tricky situation. I don't envy the people that are making these decisions. You know, I think, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to speak on that. You know, it's, it's tricky. And many of the available jobs are turnover jobs, such as Amazon or pest control. You know, there's that guy on YouTube, his name's Chandler David Smith, and he's now a, um, 
I'm going to say one thing. I'm going to do maybe two more questions and then I'm really going to go. Um, Pastor, anyway, Chandler David Smith, he now does real estate, but he also does door-to-door -door sales for pest control. And I use pest control. There's nothing wrong with pest control either. Um, I think that's a good job. It might be dangerous working around chemicals. I don't know. Um, but, but there's nothing wrong with doing pest control. Why is there high turnover there? Is it because of the chemicals? I don't know. My pest man was really cool too. Both of my pest man have been cool. Okay. Follow. A rookie nurse is not always a bad nurse. Now it sucks that they're putting out nurses that have, have been doing this their entire life, right? I don't, I don't know what the workaround is for that, but that sucks. They've been working through the whole pandemic and now they're being like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think this is an easy solution, but a rookie nurse is not necessarily bad, bad nurse, right? Let's say you get a young nurse or you get a young doctor. Guess what? That means that they have the most recent training. They have the most up-to-date information. Um, that means that whatever methods they were taught are the most advanced and the most current and the most relevant. Like maybe, I don't know, maybe the way to even administer a shot has changed. So, um, and yes, they should be uh, supervised but they also have the most recent current training. So, um, so yeah, so, so don't be afraid of a new rookie nurse. Everybody has to start somewhere. So don't worry about that. And then let's do day Goro's and then we're going to go. Um, day Goro, why can't I certify? So if you didn't qualify for a new claim, then you wouldn't be able to certify. A lot of people received Fed Ed and they had their benefits. Um, they saw their claim balance increase, right? But the claim balance didn't truly increase because the whole Fed Ed program expired September 11th, right? So that was the last day to collect benefits under the Fed Ed extension. So now the only way to collect something would be if you qualified for a whole new claim. And to qualify for a whole new unemployment claim, if you just are coming off a claim, if you've got two back-to-back -back claims, two consecutive claims, you need to meet an earnings requirement and you need to have had some attachment to the workforce. So if you haven't worked at all since first filing your claim, you wouldn't qualify for a new claim. All right. And that seems like a good place to end. Uh, Debbie's normally in here asking me to remind everybody that I do go live again on Monday night at 9 p.m. Um, sugars, uh, let's read Sugar Sprinkles. Um, jobs are hiring, but they have the nerve to be so picky, which I get, but then still complain being short staffed. Like, well, you didn't want help them in my opinion. It's yeah, it's tricky. It's tricky. Um, I will say, you know, if it's, if it's like an entry level job, probably the number one thing that they're probably looking for would be availability, like having open availability. And you guys, um, I always encourage everyone to be honest, but I know for sure that some of my employees, like when they first got hired, they told us their availability was any, any, any. And then like maybe a week after they got hired, they were like, oh, by the way, I can't come in Monday, Wednesday, Friday, because I'm in school. And you're like, ah, are you sure you can't come in Friday? Because movie theaters are super busy Friday. <laughs> but, um, you know, open availability is really important um, for a lot of these entry level jobs that might help you. Um, the more available you are, the easy it is for them to schedule you. Hello, John Francis. Unfortunately, this is the tail end of the live stream. Um, I am going to be heading out for the day. Thank you guys so much for watching Shelly's Millions. I will see you tomorrow night at 9 p.m. if I didn't get to your question today. Have a great rest of your Sunday, and I am off to call my boss. <laughs> There's Debbie reminding uh, everybody that I'll be live again tomorrow at 9. And if you haven't already, please take a minute and like the video. All right. Bye, guys.